Welcome to Pub Preview, where we play up and coming games and give our take on them. I'm Brian, and tonight I'm joined by Shuck, Gary, and the other Brian, as we like to say. And today we're talking about Jamie Stegmeyer's Scythe, uh, a 4X game set in a 1920s Eastern European dystopia. It's a game that's already received considerable attention. We spent last night playing through a game on Tabletopia so we could answer the burning question, does this game live up to all the noise? Uh, we'll show some clips of that game as we do our review, uh, but gentlemen, let's start with a uh, theme. Well, for me, um, the theme in this game is, is really, really good. Um, it's unique to the 4X genre. I don't think that there's any other alternate history type of themes out there in the 4X genre. And you combine mechs and farmers in, you know, in that type of setting, cool it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I like it's not space. Yeah, <laughs> something Not another for space or fantasy, right? Yeah, I like steampunk. I think the, the theme's cool. pretty well integrated into the game, um, and yeah, it's cool. Like like everyone's pointed out, it's, it's unique and uh, it's not space, and uh, it's it's very much uh, supplemented by the art, which is just astounding. So, do you think that the the four X fits well with the dystopia kind of um, Polish Europe? I think it makes it fit well. In Makes yeah. it makes it fit well. I think, I think it works out. Yeah, I tell you, uh, as far as that goes, I kind of want to know what the story is. I, I I wish there was like a novel to kind of go with it, because mm -hmm. um, I'm interested. I see I see that um, you know the, the world, and and I wanna I wanna know more about what's going on not right. in the game. And I think that's kind of cool. neat. It has a little bit of meta game feel to it. It really yeah. does. I think the theme is actually supported by the mechanics, um, in that um, you'll have your mechs out there. Uh, guarding your farmers, much like the promo art that came out for the game like a year ago, um, you actually do have your mechs out there mixed in with your farmers, um, and you know, so I, I think the theme is actually pretty well integrated into the rest. I don't think it's a game that's uh, where themes just necessarily paste it on. I think he has some mechanics that kind of support that. Okay, great. Speaking of mechanic, let's uh, segue into the mechanics of the game, the uh, mechanics and the design, and let's. Uh, what's one? Uh, good or bad, what's one mechanic that just really stood out for you in this game? Well, I'll start. Um, the, uh, the mechanic that I really, really enjoyed in this game was the, the way that you moved your mechs and your buildings off of your player mat to give you additional abilities. So as you built, as you built things, um, you were given uh, abilities that went along with those things. Um, it really felt um, like had a Terra Mystic kind of feel to me. Um, it felt really good. Um, it's not just putting stuff on a map and getting a card that gives you an ability. It's directly related to, you know, they're directly related to each other. Mm -hmm. Each mech also, like you have to, you, you want to unlock them in a certain order potentially. I mean, each one gives you like a little, uh, little different bonus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you kind of have to think about which one you want to do. It, uh, I like that. That's nice. Um, I would say the upgrade mechanic I found particularly fun. Um, almost, uh, I would spend much of, while I was watching other players, I'd spend much of my downtime figuring out when I upgraded how I could make the most of it. And uh, I really liked that. That was, that was a really sweet mechanic. I would say it is really fun. The, the board manipulation, which seems kind of like a, a Jamie Stegmeier uh, kind of staple, mm -hmm. at least in, in some of his popular games, uh, it is really fun to, to move those kind of pieces around. So. Yeah, well Gary kind of stole my thunder. The upgrade is probably my favorite thing, uh, how with just one uh, action you get to do two things, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, but I'll say another thing I think is really neat and unique is the keeping the resources on the board. I think is uh, mm. fairly different and um, intrigues me. I like that a lot as well. But the upgrades are definitely the coolest part for me. So another one that I really enjoy is the, the way the scoring in the game happens. I love the way that your popularity uh, factors into how you score at the end. It's not just a matter of, I got these points throughout the game. It's you're managing your popularity and your power, and, and it's a give and take between those things. And It's not just the person that gets all six stars on the board that ends the game that wins. There's like multiple levers you have to pull yeah, and keep yeah. in check. There's definitely... There's definitely a more more than one way to win the game too. You're not all after the mm -hmm. same objective, yeah. which um, kind of goes into the, the mechanic that I really like is that it's not about, when I think of a 4X game, I think about building an army and taking over the other side. But in this game, that's not necessarily gonna work for you. Um, it's You can have a lot of uh, pieces, a lot of plastic on the mm -hmm. board, 
but if you're not if you're, they're not positioned correctly and you're not managing your resources right, I feel like the focus isn't as much on combat. It's a very uh, Euro-y feeling yeah. game, and so I would say you know I think if anyone going into it expecting a lot of heavy combat or a lot of uh, com com for combat to be the strong point of the game, I think you would you might be disappointed there. I, I think not saying the combat's weak, but I don't think. It's not all about building up the mo mm -hmm. getting all four of your mechs out and well, then just dominating the board. It's definitely not a dice rolling combat no. No. kind of system. Yeah. It's it's yeah. And the way the way the uh, the power you know your power builds up and you use it as as you as you uh, engage in combat. Um, there definitely is that factor of sometimes it's just kind of the the threat of oh man he's got mm -hmm. so much more than me. You could almost dominate by just being more powerful and no one no one would really want to attack you. Well, I like the. Uh the uh, the power and with the cards the bluffing aspect to it uh, it's minor but it, it's still there you could have a weak power and still do well mm -hmm. um, or you could just straight up say hey yeah come attack me right I, yeah I like that I think that's it's yeah. interesting and there's not dice so I think dice and combat is way over As a side note I wonder I wonder how multiple plays would affect combat with the same group mm -hmm. because, oh yeah because you get kind of you, know, you get a reputation mm -hmm. of uh, he never goes in with with just a few <laughs> cards. He always goes in all the way, you know. So, yeah. so he got a good card. Don't mess with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the last thing I'll throw in about combat is it feels completely different than any other forex game I've played. And I forex games are one of they're my cup of coffee. You know, like I love forex games, and this one feels different to me. That's one of the things that I really enjoyed about this game is it was. It was it was different. It was a it was a much different take on the forex genre than than any other forex game that I've played. So I don't know if we can say much about the game's uh, physical components uh, other than what we've just seen online on the Kickstarter and the pictures and and uh, what we got to play with on Tabletopia. But I think we would be amiss if we didn't mention the beautiful artwork by uh, by Jacob Rosalski. Um, I think. Personally, it is it is just gorgeous, and it really pulls me into the game itself. It, it drips thing, and uh, yeah. and just like you said earlier, makes me want to know like, hey, what, what's what's the backstory here? Yeah, you know, yeah. But. Well, the fact that that Jamie started with the artwork, he saw the artwork and wanted to make this game, says something about that artwork to me. And I mean, well, not I mean, seeing the artwork also says something to me too. But I mean, just the fact that it inspired a game, right? I mean, uh, it it's amazing. Well, and you think about like when you when you you view art like a movie or or, a, or you read a story, you want that suspension disbelief. I think we want that in board games too. When you go and you play a game, you'll be a lot more forgiving if you if there's something about the game that just isn't your cup of cup of Joe, or you know you you'll look past that if you are immersed in the world and you can suspend disbelief. You actually went in a different direction than what I thought you were going to go. Was the uh, the iconography on the board itself? Uh, is very easy to learn. It's very straightforward. I mean, if I go there, I know exactly what you're getting. It's yeah. not. It, it, sometimes it's too overwhelming, and I think in this game mm -hmm. it really wasn't. Right. It feels very kind of language independent as far as like the the components go. So mm -hmm. I mean, uh, translate the rule book, and you know, mm -hmm. you're off to the races. I will say, stepping into it, like just looking at the board, um, I mean, it's almost a little overwhelming. And then, but once you play like a turn or two, I mean, it. it it does flow pretty well. <laughs> All right, we have a new rating system that we want to. <laughs> That's for your weird hey, comment. <laughs> well played. <laughs> we have a new rating system that we're going to employ in today's review. We're also going to use it in our future reviews, and it's very simple. Is it this a game that we would buy, uh, or is this a game that uh, we would just play, uh, or is this a game we would skip altogether? And we'll start with Brian Casey. Brian, is this? Would you buy it? Would you play it? Or would you skip it? I would definitely buy this game. Or in this case, I would back this game. Gary? Uh, yeah, I would agree. Um, I would buy it or uh, back it. I'm, I'm definitely uh, already backing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean. This is more of a game that I would probably play, uh, and more specifically because they're already buying it. Um, if they weren't, I'd probably highly consider buying it. So it's it's a good game. I like it. Okay. Well, I'm I, I backed it as well. So I'm in the buy it community here, and I'm after playing it, I'm I've even up to my um, <laughs> my level to get the nicer components and the bigger board. So for sure, buy it. Hey guys, thanks for watching our review of Scythe. Uh, if you'd like to 
follow us. If you liked what you saw, we'll have links below. You can subscribe to us on YouTube or any of the other social media of your choice. Um, we appreciate you watching.